Hey friends, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish. I wanted to tell you about the City of Arches Kickstarter, which is going on right now, and I want to show off one of the parts of the 42-page sample preview that you can get by taking a look at the Kickstarter page. The City of Arches is a high fantasy city source book for lazy DMs. It's a product that I've been working on for the last two years. It's an excellent city source book that lets you drop a city into any fantasy role-playing game, any campaign world of either your own building or other published campaign settings, and yet gives you a place where you have unlimited sources of adventure both for exploration, role-playing, combat, all the diving into dungeons, exploring deep caves, finding interesting lands around there, and dealing with people from all over the multiverse, all in one city. I'm really excited about it. And today, I want to show off one part of the free preview that's available and talk about how you'll find other versions of this in the main book when the main book comes out. In the book, we have lots of locations with all sorts of different plots and character arcs and adventure seeds that you can use to build your own adventure. One of the things that we have is we have three different large campaign arcs that you can follow if you want to have sort of a structured way of running your players through a larger campaign set in the City of Arches. I offer three different ones. And in the sample chapter, we have one of these, which is known as the Key of Worlds. The whole idea behind the Key of Worlds is that in the City of Arches, there's all of these archways. These archways are largely dormant. They generally don't do anything. Every so often, a spark will happen and like somebody from another world will show up with no memories of how they got there. They're introduced to the city and they become part of the city's population. The arc, the arches used to be portals to all kinds of other worlds or all kinds of other lands that were all used by this terrible tyrannical ruler now known as the Nameless King, because all aspect of his visage have been removed from society, from been removed from all of history. Uh, there is another campaign arc called The Rise of the Nameless King, which is about the Nameless King being brought back into power. Uh, but then there's this campaign arc called The Key of Worlds. Uh, there was an artifact that the, probably the Nameless King had in his possession known as the Key of Worlds, which let him open up any of the archways to any of the worlds that he wanted to go to. Super powerful artifact and super Super dangerous. And the idea behind the campaign is that a group of knights known as the Knights of the Black Flame hid this key. They, they didn't want to just destroy it because of the potential it had, but they knew that in the wrong hands, it would be a terrible weapon that could destroy not just this world, but many worlds. So they wanted to hide this key. So they found a pocket demiplane where they hid the key away and then barred it behind a single door. And then they, they keyed the door so that nobody can get into that door. Nobody can get that, that, into that demiplane without igniting three black fire brazers that exist in and around the city of Arch. They could be outside. You can actually move them around. But in the campaign arc, we have them in and around the city of Arches, sort of far away places where these braziers uh, exist. The braziers can only be illuminated by two objects, a magical staff called the Staff of Severlin and a sword, a, a, a black fire, a, a black fire sword. That's essentially a flame tongue long sword that can that, that ignites with black fire. Only with one of those two objects can you ignite the three braziers. And if you ignite the three braziers, that opens up the door to the vault and then you could get in and the idea that the knights had was we want to make sure that somebody if they really need to can get there but only the right people can get in there and we don't want to just destroy the key but we want it separated enough that nobody's just going to wander around and find it they're very small order so we find out that there's actually in the in the campaign arc itself the characters are brought in by a mage of Cartan, one of the kind of sinister wizard groups that operate in the city of arches who says like hey i want to find out more about this key of worlds can you look into it and this is kind of before the characters really know what the key of worlds is about and everything like that they learn about the Bra blackfire braziers they learn about the objects but then they also learn that um, that other groups are seeking this key out that if the characters don't engage with it other character other villains are going to go try to acquire these things they're on the trail needed to require to to acquire the items and ignite the braziers and get and get through the the arc so the general campaign arc is finding one of the two learning about the whole storyline figuring out what's going on learning the location of the braziers learning the location of either the sword or the staff acquiring one of these objects igniting the braziers getting to the vault and getting the key before bad guys do
That's really the whole premise of the campaign arc. So the campaign arc talks about the notable NPCs that are here. It talks about the whole background of it. It talks about the initial adventures where at first level adventures of the characters just even first learn about the key and the braziers and things like that. And then they go on this quest where they have lots of different choices about where they're going to go. Do they want to go get the sword? Do they want to go get the staff? They get to pick which one they want to go to. And I've been running this campaign arc for my home game. I've been using level up advanced 5e in order to navigate this, in order to run this campaign, which is been really working very well and the players went and acquired the blackfire longsword but then they said we, we want to try to stop them from getting the staff well the key is the key i'm using the word key too many times the staff is already picked up they're already they're going to find out that somebody already acquired the staff and that the evildoers have the staff too the reason why that's kind of an important aspect of this campaign arc is if the characters get both items, then nobody can get the key and they're fine. As long as they bury those two items, nobody can get the key. That's why there's two from a game design standpoint. That's why there's two because the other one, the bad, the bad guys can get one. The characters need to get one. And then it's a race for the braziers. Who's going to be able to ignite the braziers as they go. And it can either be that the characters themselves, if they're motivated, ignite all three braziers before and then unlock the door. Or it could be that the other group is also igniting braziers and you want to try to outplay them to see who's going to get which braziers. And then at the end, all the three braziers are lit and then they go to the door and, and open the door. So that's how the arc works. That's how the campaign arc works. And it's about a five page, six page arc for each one of these. The design is to kind of give you a one paragraph. Here's an adventure that you can run. Here's another path. The path for each of the braziers, for example, has sort of three adventures along the way if you're going for the brazier of the nameless king you go through the endless warrens you go through dragon's reach and then you go to the temple of the nameless king if you're doing the brazier of grayon you go to sunken revia you see the abhuman effigy and you go to the shattered keep so there's like different like little adventure paths that exist in parallel that the characters can choose from while they're opening while they're opening this up so pretty neat pretty neat design and just one of three different campaign arcs that exist inside this game and you can actually mix them together. So there is also the Rise of the Nameless King can be another campaign arc. And you could either run that one independently or you could kind of do what I'm doing, which I'm sort of weaving the two together so that there are groups that are trying to bring the Nameless King back. They also seek the key, but their motivation is slightly different. And that way there's another set of adventures. And of course, you can fill this thing with side quests about how they go and they pick up other, other things along the way, how they get in the way of the group, the other group that's trying to, that's trying to figure things out. And all sorts of stuff like that. So I think that this is a, in my opinion, what I'm trying to do is build a way that instead of giving you an entire single campaign adventure, and then you kind of having to rebuild it and refix it up and make it the way you want it, that I want to give you the skeleton for a campaign that you can build from to build your own campaign the way you want it to work in this city. So I hope you'll check that out. Again, this is available in the 42 page sample preview, along with initial adventures that you can run either as part of this arc or just adventures to run in the city of Arches. It's all available in the City of Arches sample chapter, which is part of the City of Arches Kickstarter that you can reach in the notes below to join the City of Arches Kickstarter. I hope you check it out. Again, best way to support me. And also you're going to get an awesome product at the same time. Please check it out. Please tell your friends. I hope you really enjoy it. I'm sure you really enjoy it. I'm super excited about this product. Thank you very much.